Now this has happened to many of us. You get in your vehicle, turn the key and nothing happens. Is it the battery, the starter, maybe a relay? There are a number of different things to check. So let's start with the basics. So right under this plastic cover is the battery. So the first thing you want to check, check for any loose terminals. In other words, make sure that your negative and your positive terminal is nice and tight. Sometimes what happens over years is these connection points can really fall apart. After tightening and loosening them so many times, sometimes they'll just snap to be quite honest. So make sure that everything is really good and secure. The other thing to check are the battery posts. Now what I mean by that is sometimes you may just have a bad connection of where the battery posts meets the these large harnesses. So of course this is the negative harness and this is the positive harness. And this has happened to me with this specific vehicle. When I first obtained it, sometimes I could start the vehicle with no issues. In other words, turn the key, the car would start right up. Then literally a few minutes later, I could try again and everything was dead. The lights would not even turn on on the dashboard. And that told me most likely I have a bad connection point. So what you could do, you can just use some sandpaper for example, just clean it up, make sure it, everything is really good and clean. There's also something else you can use. Now if you happen to have a Dremel, you can use a kit like this. You can generally find something like this off Amazon. I'll have some links in the description box below. But ultimately you just take one of these attachments and just clean off the battery terminal. And that's all it was in my case. Very, very simple. So in my case, that's exactly what I did. The positive terminal of my battery was not in the best shape. So I just grabbed my uh, Dremel here and just cleaned off all the crud and it made all the difference in the world. So you want to make sure, whoops, again, you want to make sure the connection points are really, really good. Okay, so let's say in your case, you've checked the battery. The terminals are nice and tight. Everything's really clean. All of the connection points are in excellent condition. What's the next step? Well, the next step is checking the battery. Three ways you can do this. The proper way is testing the battery with a battery tester, something like this. We have a separate video showing in detail how you do it. Very simple, you essentially hook up the tester to the battery and it places a load onto the battery and it will tell you if the battery is good or not. That's option one. Now if you don't have something like this, which you probably don't in this case, what you can do is remove the battery and if you have another vehicle, if you can get a ride from someone, bring the battery to your local auto parts store. A lot of times they will check the battery for you. If the battery is bad, you can get one right there on the spot, come back home, reinstall it, and you're good to go. Another option is if you have a digital multimeter, something like this. These are really inexpensive, maybe like 15 bucks, this one off Amazon. And if you have one of these, you can quickly check the voltage. Now it's not 100% foolproof because you're not placing a load on the battery, but nonetheless, you can see what the voltage is. You want at least 12 volts. That's a good battery. So if you check the volts and it's something like eight volts, it's nowhere near what you need to crank the vehicle. So you just take the multimeter, set it on the volts DC setting. Okay, which you probably know, but just in case if you don't, so right there, whoop, right there, the DC setting, okay, volts DC, and then red goes to positive, black is your negative, and we have 12.2, 12.3 volts of power. So this is a good battery. Now the last option is, let's say you don't have a battery tester, you can't get to another, you don't have another vehicle to uh, bring the battery to the parts store, you don't have a digital multimeter, what else can you do? Well, in a pinch, turn on the headlights. And typically, if the headlights turn on, the battery is good. If the headlights don't turn on, then either the battery is bad or you have a bad connection. So that's something you can do very, very quickly. But nonetheless, you want to check the state of the battery. Now very quickly, before we go to the next step and remove this battery, one other thing comes to mind. And let's say, again, you try turning on your headlights and nothing happens. And then you try to jump the vehicle. And when you uh, attach those jumper wires, 
Now you see your headlights turn on. That is a perfect sign that the battery is no longer good or at least needs a charge at the very least. So you can also give that a shot as well. But let's say that the battery is good, the terminals are good. What's the next step? Well, that's checking the starter. Now every vehicle has a starter. It just comes down to finding where it lives. So what you can do is a Google image search. You, know, you can also do a web search, but do it specifically for your vehicle. And very quickly, you can tend to find diagrams showing where the starter lives on your vehicle. Now, in my case, the starter, I can actually see it right down here. It lives underneath the battery. So I'm going to remove the battery, and I'll show you on how you can test the starter without removing it. Now the first thing I'm going to do very quickly is use PB Blaster. You can also use WD-40 and that's to just make it easier when you remove the fasteners. Also, if you live in a winter climate, you don't want these to snap on you. And these typically are 10 millimeter fasteners. And you don't have to completely remove them. So you have these J hooks. There we go. Holding these on. Okay, just like these, be careful, you don't want to hit the positive and negative terminal at the same time, but you see just J-hooks. Okay, here we go. And then here we have a battery tray. Oh, okay. So if you take a look, right here is where the starter is located. I can actually do a couple of tests with this battery tray in the way, this metal tray, but I'm going to remove it. So I have a couple of fasteners right here, and then we'll have a much better view and working room for the starter. Now, if you do have to remove a battery plate like this, as you can see, it's still on there. I have all the top fasteners removed, but something is still holding it on. And typically, they do hide one on you. So in my case, on the left, underneath the, uh, the tray here, there's a fastener. Very tight room, really hard to fit a socket and a ratchet. So grab one of these ratcheting wrenches. It makes all the differences in the world. You could typically pick up a set for like 25, 30 bucks. It's worth every penny. So let's see, here we go. If I can find it here. I just saw it. Oh, there it is. There it is, okay. Okay, so there's the fastener. And here's the tray. Now the starter on your vehicle will look very similar. You have a larger cylinder and then a smaller one with a bunch of connections. So this right here is the armature housing and this is the solenoid. Now the whole point behind the solenoid is it provides a large voltage to the starter motor. Okay, now if this is no longer good, which sometimes you may get if you try starting the vehicle, and you just hear a clicking noise, a lot of times it's the solenoid going bad. So the first thing is let's test the solenoid using the digital multimeter. So again, we're dealing with the digital multimeter that we used to test the battery. Now, as you can see, there are so many different functions and tests you can do with this. An absolute must have if you plan on doing your own auto repair. So right here, you want to find the continuity symbol. That looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot, very, very simply, okay? So just go to that setting and make sure that you see that Wi-Fi hotspot on the screen. So right now, I'm not on it, but if I hit function, there it is, okay? So that's what you want to see. Now, continuity just means two points make a connection and you will hear an audible alert. That's it. So we want to see if we have continuity from the solenoid. So let me quickly show you what we're going to do because the working room in here is very, very tight. Maybe a little hard to get the camera in here, but that being said, you're taking the multimeter, you're taking one lead, could be the black or the red lead, does not matter. Take one lead, touch it to this little S terminal. The other lead 
will go to the armature housing. Now, as you can see, sometimes it can be a little hard to get a good connection. You may want to use a little sandpaper just so you get a really clean connection. But I think we'll be okay. So one terminal here, the other one here, and we should have continuity. So here we go. One lead goes to this guy. The other one over here may be a little hard to get. As you can see, it's a little hard to get a connection, but there we go. So we have continuity. That tells us that the solenoid is good. If you do this test and you do not get continuity, then you need to replace the solenoid, which a lot of times just means you need a new starter. So that's the first test. Now there's also another test you can do using continuity. So again, we're checking for continuity, except in this case, instead of placing one lead on the armature housing, the other lead goes to the other terminal. Now, this is the positive terminal that runs to the battery. So you're not touching this guy, you'll have another connection point, and that's the one that you're touching, okay? So one lead goes to this S terminal. We're checking for something called the pulling coil. That's what we're doing. And this one goes here. And we should have continuity. There we go. And if you do have continuity, again, the solenoid is in good shape. If you do not, then you need to replace the starter. Now, there's also one other thing we can check, and that's the wiring. So again, what I'm checking here is that the wiring is in good shape. Imagine if we have a break somewhere. That means battery power is not being sent to the starter. Okay, now we know the starter is good by checking that solenoid but we're not sure if power is getting to the starter. So this is one thing you can quickly do. Now to do this, just reinstall the battery and reconnect the positive terminal to the battery. Now in my case, if I do that, there's no working room here because I need to test that power is getting down here, which you'll see in a moment. So I happen to have one of these battery packs that push out 12 volts. So this will do perfectly fine. That will supplement our car battery. So just so you can see how we do this, we have the multimeter again I'm on the volts DC setting this is the this is the same setting that we use to test the battery so let me place this down so you can see this okay and then don't forget this is acting now as my car battery so I'm just going to reconnect the positive lead to the battery so here we go, positive lead. So imagine this being the car battery and you just reconnected the positive lead, okay? Now, what I need to do is set up a ground. So with the multimeter, I'm taking the black lead. Okay, black lead is going to ground. So in my case, ground will be the negative terminal on the battery. You can also use a very good metal point. Now I want to verify powers getting here to the starter. To do that, I have, don't forget the other lead, the positive lead. And then let me grab one more alligator clip. So this is easier, obviously. You don't have to go this crazy if you're using your car battery. In my case, a little bit more involved, but nonetheless, we want to verify that we see 12 volts worth of power. And I'm touching the S terminal, by the way. And here we go, 12.4 volts. So that verifies that we have power, there are no breaks, and we're getting good connection directly to that battery. I'm sorry, to that starter. Now there's one other test you can do, and that's testing the starter by hooking up power directly to it and without turning the ignition key. Let me show you on how you can hook that up. Now this is another test you can try. It's a little bit more trickier in a sense, but nonetheless you can do this if you have a thick enough wire, which I do not. That's why I can't show you this technique. You need a, a low gauge wire, a thick wire like this that's long enough. But ultimately you reinstall the battery along with the connections and then you're setting up a jumper wire from that terminal, that S terminal. And all that you're going to do is take this wire and touch it to the positive terminal. This doesn't work because this is just way too thin. You need a thick wire again. And if you do this and you hear cranking, the starter is good. Okay, so you can also try this technique as well, but typically if you do the continuity test, you verify that power is getting to the starter, you can really see if the starter is in good shape. But let's say you do all this and the starter is fine. You have no issues with the starter. What else can we check? Well, there's also a relay, a starter relay that we can test. 
Okay, quick recap. We know that the battery terminals are good. We know that the battery is good and the starter is good. Chances are if you have this trouble, typically it's either the battery or the starter. But if you still have trouble, the next step is checking something called the starter relay. There's a relay for the starting system. If the relay goes, the starter won't crank. It's easy to test. The hardest part is finding the relay. Just do a web search. Again, a lot of times you, you can pick up images showing where the relay lives for your vehicle or on your vehicle, I should say. So let's go ahead and remove it from this Acura. We'll place it on the bench. Again, we're, we'll be using the multimeter, an absolute must have tool if you want to work on your own vehicle. Now, don't forget if you need a guide on how to find the relay on your specific vehicle, just do a web search. So in my case, I have a fuse location in the cabin and then underneath this plastic cover, there are just clips involved here. Just remove this cover and then I have a bunch of relays. Now in my case, this is the starter relay right here. So let me remove it and place it on the bench. Now it's a very tight fit, so I had to pull it out off camera, but nonetheless, just remove it from the socket and there you go. Now testing the relay is quite simple. Very, very simply, it's really just a switch. And the way that it works is I have four terminals here. So in my case, when terminals three and four receive battery power, which will be this guy, you can also use your car battery to do this, when three and four is energized, there's a little switch in here. And that little switch connects these two terminals. Okay, so if you're doing this blind, you don't know which terminals to touch. You may have a schematic, but many of them don't have schematics anymore. It's still very, very simple. So grab a battery pack or again, your car battery. Be very careful because you don't want to cross the wires. And all that you want to hear is a clicking noise. So for example, if I set up my positive here, and then my negative lead, again, I just want to be careful. We should hear a clicking noise. You hear that? Okay, that's a very good sign. But let's say you, you tried these guys. Okay, one there. See, nothing going on. Okay, so you want to hear that clicking noise. Okay, so we hear the clicking noise. Now I want to verify that we have continuity regarding these two terminals okay so in other words I want to verify that inside the relay these two terminals are connecting so multimeter again it's on the continuity setting that's that Wi-Fi looking symbol we should hear this and there we go so that verifies the relay is working if I disconnected this no continuity okay so it's just that simple. So you just want to verify that the starter cut relay is in good shape. Now, if you still have trouble, what else can you check? Well, number one is the ignition switch. Now you can actually test these switches now. I'm not going to show how because it's very, very specific to the vehicle. So if I show you on how to do it on this Acura, it's not gonna work on any other car. So my recommendation regarding that is just do a web search specific for your vehicle. If it's problematic for that specific make and model, you will find many articles on how to repair it and maybe you have a recall. It won't cost you anything. So that's number one. Number two is the transmission range switch. What is that? Now the transmission range switch is really a safety feature and that's so you can only start the vehicle in either park or neutral. Let me remove the camera here. So in other words, if I place the vehicle into R and try to start the vehicle, nothing happens, right? Nothing happens, same in drive. Can't start the car. But once it's in neutral or park, there you go. So it's a safety feature. Now what happens is when that sensor starts to go, you can try wiggling the, uh, the shifter here in park or place it in neutral. And if it works, then you know that's an issue that you have to look at. Now, this is something we have a separate video on. We did this years ago. I'll include that video in the description box below the link to that video. And I go in detail on how to test it and how to replace it. But ultimately, by going through all of these steps, you can really pinpoint where the problem is. So I hope this helps a number of you out there. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.